Was Napoleon a git? It sounds like an old question, doesn't it? So um, let me add some context. Uh, viewers of this channel may also be viewers of a channel called Lindy Beige. Uh, if you aren't, uh, we can thoroughly recommend that you have a look at it. Uh, the chap there, uh, Lloyd, uh, produces some excellent content. And to be honest, uh, his channel is one of the major reasons that we started this one. Um, one of the pieces of excellent content that I, that I just mentioned was a video about Sir Sidney Smith um, that we both recently watched and we both really enjoyed. It's very, very good. Um, and I will put a link in the description below um, to that video. I thoroughly recommend that, that you watch it. Um, now, uh, it's about the life of, of Sir Sidney, who uh, was around during the uh, a, a British chap, um, a, ended up British knight, uh, who was around during the time of Napoleon and uh, was a bit of a, a thorn in his side. Um, and something we noticed in this video that we thought was really interesting was how often he referred to Napoleon as a git. Um, now we thought this was just a really interesting concept, so we thought we should uh, explore it a little bit more and uh, see if, if we come out with the same conclusion, try, try and quantify it a bit and see what we come out with. Um, so here we go, we, we've both been away, we've uh, had, a, had a look for gittish and non-gittish actions that uh, he's <laughs> it's been performed uh, throughout his life. Um, and we're going to give it a go. So uh, I'm Sam, that's Will, and welcome to Pine of History. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, how are you doing, Will? You okay? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm sat here with a beer I've never had before, never tasted anything like it. It reminds me of a lager top but the lemonade is really strong that sounds awful it's super citrusy mm, yeah not for me that not for me i've got a pint of uh it's called proper black and as you can see it is it is a bit give me some context there you go it is very black. um it's a black ipa from uh, lovely people down at st austell brewery in cornwall um uh, you can see i've given up on my what will will like beers um and it's lovely it's really nice i'm, I'm really impressed with it um, you want to talk about Napoleon, Will? Always love a chat about, always love a chat about Napoleon, Sam. Uh, but Sam, before we start sort of scoring the gittish and non-gittish, love that phrase, by, by the way, um, actions, I think we should clarify some quick fire common assumptions on Napoleon. Um, so everybody sees the, um, this, that, that bloke from the same viewpoint to start with. Yeah. Good idea, fire away. He was French. No, he wasn't. He was Corsican. He was short. Yeah, not really. He was a working class hero, yeah? No, not, not even slightly. Right. He was a military genius. Mm, that's interesting. It sort of depends what historian you read into. Um, genius is quite a strong word for some historians, less so for others. He, he was certainly very good. He never lost a battle before Waterloo? No, that's definitely not true. He was a warmonger. Ooh, contentious. Um, more people started a war against him than he started against other people. What the definition of warmonger is, is hard, but <laughs> look at that. Yeah, yeah, he, did, he fought constantly, he didn't he? Um, but that'll do, Sam, for now. Um, let's find out if he's a git, shall we? We should, yeah. We were a little bit torn as to work the best way to work out or, you know, to quantify Gittishness. Um, and eventually we settled on a, a numerical system because not the only one could think of, to be honest. Um, so we thought that wouldn't put too much bias in it. So we're just going to name points and we'll assign, I, I thought git points was quite a funny way of doing it. Um, so we'll, we'll assign him a git point or a, or a not git point. Um, as to whether, whether or not he was a git. I should quickly explain that we are going solely for whether he was a git not whether he was uh, a great or, uh, or, or, you know, this sort of um, uh, esteemed statesman. There are definitely people around. Uh, Andrew Roberts, uh, who's a very, very well respected historian, put forward the idea that Napoleon should be called Napoleon the Great. Definitely not discussing that debate here because you can definitely be considered the great and still be a git. So we're slowly going for git points here. Um, I reckon you should go first, Will. Will's keeping okay. the point. He's got that says git points on the top. You can't read it very well because of the light ring, but it's there. It says git points. Um, but yeah, so I'll start. I'll offer one up, Sam. Um, 
start with the obvious one, shall we? The Code Napoleon, or if you're French, Le Code Napoleon. Um, the this overhauled the French outdated and somewhat confusing legal system. Uh, it removed class privileges, made all men equal, men equal, um, and it imparted civil rights. Sam, surely introducing civil rights is a non git mark. Uh... Yeah, I mean, all right, okay. You can have a, a non-dip point for uh, for civil rights, definitely, um, but not for the Code Napoleon. I think that's that's too much. I mean, a it removed all individual rights for women. Uh, it made it illegitimate children second-class citizens, and, and and it reintroduced colonial slavery. So, uh, if anything, I, I think you should, yes, definitely a non-dip point for uh, for civil rights, but. Probably two get points for the other, for uh, colonial slavery and and mistreatment of women and legitimate children. So that is net one get point. Yeah. One. One. Not a good start for you there. We'll, we'll move on. Um, no, not for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll offer you a reason for a get point. Um, how about the the treatment of Kalinkov? So Kalinkov was his Russian ambassador uh, prior to his fatal march on Moscow. So Napoleon sends him off to Russia. He don't want to go. Um, but Napoleon, who has to sign off on marriages, says, well, I'll tell you what, if you go, I'll sign off on the marriage you want to your, your mistress. So he says, all right, OK, well, I'll go. And Napoleon says, only two years, off you go. Three years later, he comes back and tells Napoleon, really don't think you should be invading Russia. Napoleon doesn't like that news at all. And exiles his mistress. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, that is quite kittish, isn't it? Um, quite kittish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's another point to team get, I think. Um, yeah. Um, but, right, so that... Got to rub out the one, make it two. Good work. Thank you. Like, you, you can't see it. The screen's too reflective. Um but I, I promise it's there. Can you you see that? There you go. So you get point. Yeah, yeah. Um. So let's talk about his influence on modern day Paris now. Um, the architecture is a tourist destination for people all over the world, and he also built a sewer system. Cool. Yeah, I can't deny that. Yeah, one non-get point there. Um. Cool. Hang on. If he's that's. That's going down to one because I'm doing it as net in total. Yeah. yeah. There um, you go, one get point. But let, let's let's have a look at his treatment of, of um, his allies and his, his ally state, shall we? So um, probably closer to bullying than any alliance that I can think of. Uh, and, and so much so that eventually, almost universally, all his allies turned against him. Uh, right. So you're telling me that this is another get point? I am telling you that, yeah. So I've got the rubber sound put two down again. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cheers. Um, fine. Another point. What about the signing of Concord at those um sort of stuff? I think I, I hope I said it right. Um anybody who's watched any of our videos before know that I slaughter French every time I try and say it. Um but yeah, stopping it was it stopped the discrimination of Christians. Pretty much. It could concord out, I think it's supposed to be. Um, and yeah, you know, that, that's definitely a non-get point. Can't argue with that. Um, uh, the Russian campaign, I mean that's pretty giddish, wasn't it? That's a that's you know two out. I, I like to take it back down to one again. Are you telling me I'm gonna to have to write down the same number? Well, I, I think so. This mark this march on Moscow killed half a million soldiers. God knows how many civilians. I mean. For, for for what purpose? In advised military campaign. It's, it's, we've already we've already established it's not, that. It's not, not a lovely month in Moscow. It was particularly hot when he arrived. <laughs> That's that is because it was on fire. But yeah, it, it, yeah, it was on fire. Yeah. So say so he's back up to two net plus two plus two get points. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I can't defend that really. Um. But he did introduce the street numbering system that we that we still use today. You're asking for a non-git point for him putting odd numbers on one side of the street and even numbers on the other. 
you are sorry you're asking for a non-git point for making all the postman's sorting jobs ever so slightly more difficult than they would otherwise be no well i'm not having a git point for it though no all right fair enough <laughs> okay we'll call it quits on that one shall we um how are we doing on the scores yeah so well it's he's currently on two on two get points and that means he's been he's been he's been a get two times more than he has been a when i say when i say two times i don't mean as a multiplication i mean two examples more two examples. Um, have you got any more examples of non gettishness Yeah, I do actually. Um, there's a lovely story about him. He used to be quite a he used to be quite a pain in the ass for his escort. Um, which I suppose it, right, this sounds gittish to start with, but he was rumored, and obviously I wasn't there, Sam. So I'm just going on sort of sort of stories I've read um, or heard about he, he used to sneak out. Um, under his coat, like, and he he, he used to go and um, ha, have a nosy about the guys on, on on picket, who were the guys sort of out on the edge of the camp, sort of standing sentry, keeping guard, keeping a lookout. And one time, um, I think this was in his Russia campaign, actually. Um, but don't hold me to that. Um, no correction. I think it was against the Austrians. Um, he what he he went for a walk and he sent, and he found a soldier asleep on picket, um, and he he picked up the man's musket, and instead of waking him, he stood there. It's sort of at his post until the until the, the sentry was stirred and woke up. As you can imagine, um, the sentry was pretty shut, pretty embarrassed. Um, as the law in the French army at the time was, if you you're found asleep on picket, you are shot. Um, there's no two two ways about it. Um, but when the officer came round, Napoleon apparently he said, um, to not. To not punish this man. Interesting. I suppose that's ungittish. I mean, you wonder how many other people were shot for that, and that one got lucky. But go on in. Have, have an ungit point. Why not? Yeah. An yeah. Un I've got another. Um, yeah. Hold on. I just, you mentioned warmongering earlier. Well, I mentioned warmongering earlier, but you mentioned how sort of um, it, you didn't really know what it meant. Um, I just wanted to clear, clear it up slightly. He didn't start that many wars. Um, in fact, he only officially started two um, so in Spain and Portugal and then in Russia. Um, everything else was declaring war on him, really. And personally him as well, not necessarily war on France. Um, it was war on Napoleon, wasn't it? Particularly when he came back... Um, from Elba, people declared war on him um, because he, he he was very established as a French monarch in that campaign. Is that worth a point? Uh, I'm, I'm, look, mate, I'm clutching at straws. It, it was it was going to be if if we take that, then he's on he's on, he is level. He's not been any more of a git than he's not been a git. I was about to say, you might argue that the march on Russia is not, compar not comparable to him taking someone's picket duty for, for an evening. I think that would, that would definitely be fair. We haven't scaled this too well. Is, is that, was that your last non-git point? Uh, I think... Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. I think so. Do you got many left? Yeah, you know, I've got a few, yeah. Um, right. Right, so so at, at, at the moment, he, he's on one. He's on one. All right, well, 
Okay, so um, other points I've got. One, uh, he hated female influence and everything, like just hated women having any, any influence on anything else in life. Two, he was so offensively crap at Corsican politics, his whole family had to flee the island. Three, uh, he was... He very hypocritically put his brothers on the thrones of various states that he invaded. I should add that they were crap at governing as well. Uh, four, uh, he, he had a hideously tight grip on the press. So uh, it, everything was how he wanted it to be. Five, he was ridiculously petty about literally everything. Uh, and six, uh, despite your claim that uh, he only started two wars, uh, he was involved in nine or ten of them. And it's hard to claim that he doesn't have literally millions of lives on his conscience. And then there's the prisoners in the Middle East. So, well, why don't you just start with that, man? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I was, I've got dirty fingers now. I've been, I've been, I've been wasting ink playing along with this. And then he, can you, can you drop a seven-point bombshell? Have you, you may have started, well, well, guys, we'll start with him on minus seven. <laughs> that sounds fair. Now, now let's go ahead. All right, sweet. Um, but yeah, okay. I I can't really play devil's advocate against this. Um, uh, particularly the 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 prisoners in the Middle East. Um. For those who didn't know what we're referring to, it's after the Battle of Jaffa, not Jaffa Cake, but Jaffa, probably not what the cake was named after, um, but um, it might be, they might like orange jelly in it, um, I, I don't know, I, I've never been, but he had around 3,000 prisoners of war, um, and they tried to fight after becoming prisoners, and for this, Napoleon was not happy he lined them all up and had them all bayoneted um which is particularly ruthless i think but very personal being bayoneted um and which is pretty grim really and by the laws of the day though um sam their their, their lives were forfeit for fighting back as a prisoner but well, well, yeah really but by the laws of today, you can be penalised for cycling on the pavement. It's still a git of a copper that gives you a ticket for it, though, isn't it? Yeah, fine. Yeah, that. Yeah, fine. Look, yeah, I, I think you're being pretty conclusive, Sam. Um, I chucked the whiteboard away in frustration. Um, it made a bit of a bang. I hope it's all right. Um. Uh, it's, it's looking a bit one-sided, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I, I will, I will stop soon. I do have one more I want to add, though. Um, Another one. Just, just one more. Just one more. This is about the Cassini family. Now, if you haven't heard of the Cassini family, the Cassini family used to, uh, well, about four generations of the three generations, maybe three generations of the Cassini family, um, were committed to making maps. They were commissioned by uh, a, a prior king. Uh, to make a, a map of France. And they use this sort of groundbreaking triangulation uh, way to make a, a really detailed, really accurate map of France. Took them at least three, it may have been four generations of them, uh, to do this. Uh, they started in like 1740 or something like that. Uh, when Napoleon came to power, like 1799, by the time it's got to 18 something, so you're 60 something years later, um, he commissioned a whole new set of maps. He didn't like this set of maps. And I'm led to believe the reason he didn't like this set of maps is because this set of maps, which is more accurate, made France a bit smaller, so he didn't govern as much. I mean, that's pretty good. That explains gifted, why right? he Russia. It <laughs> explains why. <laughs> it's like, more land, please. Yeah, land mass, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, that's not great either. Um, well, not for them anyway. <laughs> Not for those guys, but I've got one thing I'd like to add, um, and that is that it's he. That it's not really gittish. It's not not. It's not not gittish. I think it's something. It's just something I like about Napoleon, um, and it's that his letters he wrote to 
Mary Louise, I think. Yeah. Second wife. It might. Yeah, it might have been Josephine. But one of his wives. Um, and they're all kept and I, they're all sort of studyable. I guess they're in Paris somewhere. But um, he was very sort of embarrassingly affectionate. Um, and and quite like horny. Yes, yeah. There's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stories about about that. Um, he was said to have really loved Mary Louise, though. I think there. Uh, I've 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 seen it a few times. People saying that he he did truly love two women in his life, but only one of them was his wife. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll skip over that. Um, so there we are. Then. I, I I know we've missed stuff. We, we've missed stuff on both sides of this. And if you're a big Napoleon fan, you're going to think we've missed loads of stuff. And if you're not a Napoleon fan, you're also going to think we missed loads of stuff. So I'm sorry for all the bits that you think we've missed. Um, but, you know, this video needs to be mercifully, mercifully short. Um, so where do we end? We don't have a final score. Do we? We, we, you've thrown the scores across. Well, I, I did get frustrated. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Um, I think it was, I think it was eight. Like, <laughs> He was on eight git points. Um, so eight, eight more. He was, yeah, he was eight git points more than not git points, which um, is frustrating because, you know, he's got such a big name and his sort of big myth around him that you, you want it to be nice. Yeah. But he fired a cannon, he fired his cannons into a church we're full of hiding revolutionaries fine that's nine get points um like yeah, yeah you're right um so, so there we go then with a score of maybe eight maybe 17 and a scoreboard thrown across the room um we can say with with reasonable clarity now um that Napoleon was demonstrably a git um, so there we go, Lindy Bay, so there we go, Lloyd. Um, your hypothesis explored and thoroughly concurred with. Um, tricky debate, though, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to work out when the, sort of the standards to judge someone by there when it was 200 years ago. And, and it's worth noting that Napoleon's legacy still stands. Uh, you could argue he did great things for Europe as a whole, uh, but you could easily argue the opposite. Um, a bit of fun ones to research though. I'm a massive fan of Napoleon. Um, <laughs> although I'm reluctant to say that now. Um, I, I'm, I'm a massive fan of the time period and the sort of um, the whole story, the love affair with the Napoleonic times. Um, it was it was it was very grand and pompous war, and that appeals to me. Um, you, you can read into that what you will. <laughs> um, but I suppose it's time to talk about recommendations and my beer is dangerously full at this time um, <laughs> so <laughs> let me have a quick sip you'd like me to go first will oh perfect then i've got a chance to have a bit more beer you have a few sweets, can't you? okay um i uh, i'm not going to recommend a book this week though uh there, there is a book link to this um if you've ever been on the youtube channel intelligent squared which you may or may not have been uh, I would recommend this, and there's some really good debates on there. In effect, what they do is they put together, um, uh, well, sometimes it's singular, but often various historians and, and you know, people of note in various fields put them together, and they put a debate together. It tends to be uh, with a live audience, so you get audience participation, you get questions. And they do a really interesting one based around uh, an Andrew Roberts book called Napoleon the Great. Um, with Andrew Roberts, uh, who's a well-respected um, uh, Napoleonic story, well, and, and other historian, um, and uh, Adam Zamoyski, or Zamowski, always pronounced that wrong, sorry Adam, um, uh, who, who did a, a, another book, but effectively saying, saying the other thing, and they, they get them together on the stage, it's chaired by Jeremy Paxman, actually, um, and it's a really interesting debate, it's about an hour and a half long, um, I'd really recommend sitting down, they've got, they're, they're both so well respected as historians in their, in their field, um, and it's interesting seeing them going from very similar source material, one assumes, to uh, very different opinions. Uh, so, yes, thoroughly recommend that YouTube channel, thoroughly recommend um, the books involved with it. So that's Napoleon the Great, which is the uh, uh, Andrew Roberts book. Though he's also done some other interesting books. He did uh, 
a book called Napoleon and Wellington, which was also very good. Uh, and um, as I always, he did an awful lot of Napoleonic stuff worth reading. So he did a big book on Napoleon, uh, which I've actually recommended before, uh, and a very interesting book on the 1812 campaign, which was the uh, the March on Moscow. So um, yes, two historians on a YouTube channel for me there. What have you got, Will? Yeah, so I um, I'm going to go down a different route as well. And um, so for those of you that don't know, um, I think you mentioned it before that I'm quite into my my models, my miniatures, and particularly into the Napoleonic era, um, and I am sort of desperate to get back to playing this game. Um, so it's called Black Powder. Um, it's the, this is one of the rule books, um, and you've already seen some of the models I've painted in a previous video, actually, on the British Army, um, and I'll put some videos up or some pictures up now whilst I'm talking and um, but basically the whole community in this is so knowledgeable about various things so um they they not only do they like reenact playing battles and stuff with models um but whole campaigns and sort of there are books on very specific battles um and there's books on uniforms and everything like that so you get proper nerdy about it all um and i love it I, I love getting lost at the moment whilst we're in lockdown i'm painting um sort of six to ten figures a day um build building up my armies i'm halfway through my british army about a quarter of the way through my french army sort of hoping to get through to soon be being able to play um well when we can see people again but it's a really engaging way um, particularly if you do have an interest in this period and and sort of Napoleon and his campaign, it's a really nice, fun way to make it to make it really come alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be um, it'd be good when lockdown ends and we can start actually uh, playing again. Um, but yes, I do hope you enjoyed this. Uh, comment down below. Let, let us know what you think. Do you think Napoleon was a git? Do you think we've been too harsh on him? Do you think we haven't been harsh enough? You know, comment down below. Let us know what you think. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, do hit that like button. Do subscribe if you want to see more things that we've done. Uh, do have a look back, back at other videos we've done. You might you might enjoy some of them if you've enjoyed this one. If you are interested in Napoleon, we've done a really a, a longer video, a deep dive into Napoleon's life that takes you through uh, how he came to power and what happened when he did. Um, so we do hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Uh, my pint is about to be empty. <laughs> Will's is nearly there, but there we go. Yeah, well, yeah. let's call it a day. There we go. An empty pint brings us to the end of an episode of Pint of History. We do hope you enjoyed it uh, and we'll see you next time. See you later.